Hi, this is Simon Obstel. I hope you're all safe and well, and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion. And today we're going to be taking a look at this slashed text effect. It's quite simple, but it's I think it's quite effective. So let's get started. So our project is 1920 1080, frame rate is 24 frames a second, and the duration is 10 seconds. First thing we're going to do is we're going to add a gradient to our project. So gradient, let's open up the gradient editor. Let's select radial here. And I'm just going to pick my colors here. So I'm going to go for a dark one like that at this end, and I'm going for this one at this other end. And then let's just adjust the position. So I'm going to bring the Y up like that and the X cross like that, and then the Y down like that. And if you're ever doing gradients, I strongly advise that you come down to stylize and you add noise. And blue noise reduces banding. We don't want it animating in this instance. Let's just go for something like 0.1 on the amount there. Uh, and thus this will stop uh, your gradient banding. Otherwise, you will be in a lot of trouble when you export it. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make some text. So click on the text tool, and I'm going to type slash this text. And then let's select it, center it up, increase the scale, reduce the line spacing, come over to the transform, reset it and then come back and just do a bit of adjustment to the baseline, something like that. So what I'm going to do with this text is I'm going to make a clone of it. So I'm going to right click and make clone layer. And what I'm going to do with that text is I'm actually just going to pull it out underneath the gradient because we don't actually need to see it. Next, let's select the rectangle tool from down here and draw out a rough rectangle. Let's center it up. Let's come to shape turn off outline, turn on fill, and come to geometry. And we're going to make this size 2220. And then we're going to come over to properties, and I want to set the anchor point to 1110. So that's on the edge here of the rectangle. It's like that. It's just going to make it easier to manipulate this. OK, so I'm going to move that down behind everything because we don't need to see it. And I'm going to select this clone layer, and I'm going to right click, and I'm going to add image mask, and I'm going to use that rectangle as the image mask source. So that's masked off one half of it. Then I'm going to duplicate this clone layer, right click duplicate, and I'm going to select the image mask, and I'm going to hit invert. So now we've got back the other half of our text. Next, I'm going to select this rectangle, right click duplicate, and this time I'm going to bring it up to the top. So let's turn it on. Let's come to Style. Let's select the color picker, pick this color here. And let's just make that a much, much darker version. So this is going to be the, the shadow effect. So first of all, what I want to do is I want to link this rectangle to my master rectangle. So we can play around with the position and the rotation of the mask, and this shadow is going to follow along. So what we're going to do is we're going to select the position, link, and drag the original rectangle into the source well there. And let's just do exactly the same thing with the rotation and parameter behavior link, and link it to the master rectangle. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to select the rectangle there, and we're going to come to filters, blur, and we're going to select Gaussian Blur. And let's just crank that value all the way up to 64. In this instance, we don't need any vertical, so I'm going to turn that down to zero. So then I want to add an image mask to this rectangle, and it's going to be the same as everything else, so use that rectangle there, and we're going to invert it. To see everything's working here, let's select that master rectangle, and I'm just going to angle it a bit like that, so it's a little bit more interesting. Now, what we want is that effect of it being a sort of slash that's been poked into the canvas rather than uh, going all the way along it. And to do that, we're going to select this, let's just call that shadow. And I'm going to come to filters, distortion, and I'm going to select fisheye. 
And I'm going to set the center X position to 1000. Then I'll reduce the amount down to 10. And then all we need to do is adjust the radius. And now you'll notice that as I reduce that, we're getting that effect that we want. And what we can do is we can animate this to give the effect of it slicing into the canvas like that. So from zero to somewhere around 0.2 is going to be good. So we might actually like this particular look, but what if we wanted a nice jagged edge to our cut? So we could do that by coming to our rectangle and coming to filters, stylize, and looking for crystallize. Let's set the speed to zero because we don't want it animating. And I'm going to set the size up to about 20, I think, like that. And you can see how that's roughened it up. But the problem is it's got areas of transparency in the, in the filter and we need to be able to kill that. So what I'm going to do is come to filters, color, and we will add a levels and we will select alpha. And we want to bring the black in like that and the white in like that. And you can see the difference that makes. That's, that's removed those sort of semi-transparent bits. If we wanted a slightly less jagged line, we could come down here and select Gaussian blur. So putting that between the crystallize and the levels. And depending on how we adjust that, we can get a, a very jagged or a smoother cut. So I'm going to go for, I don't know, something like 10, just to soften it off just a little bit. So finally, let's think about some animation. Let's first of all, sort out our slash. So I'm going to come to a second and I'm going to make the animation run over six frames. So I'm going to select that fish eye. I'm going to hit a keyframe, set the radius down to zero, step forward six frames, one, two, three, four, five, six, and I'm going to set that value to 0.2. And let's just give our mask just a bit of a tweak so it looks a little bit more interesting. I'm going to go for something like that. And this will allow us to see the other thing that I want to do here, which is to take this layer here, which is the lower portion, as it were. And let's come again to one second. Let's set a position keyframe there. Step forward six frames, one, two, three, four, five, six. And uh, then let's have an X position of five and a Y position of negative five. And that just gives that little sort of sheer effect, just enhances the dynamism of it a bit. And one final thing we could do is come to our master group here. Again, let's come to one second. Let's set a scale keyframe and a rotation keyframe. And again, let's step forward six frames. And let's just have a little bit of a rotation. So a couple of, couple of degrees will do, I think, like that. And let's just punch in as well, just to compensate. So that's 106 on the scale. So that gives us that effect. And everything together just gives it a bit more drama. The other thing we could do is just change our text at this point. Because everything's a clone, we can, we can adjust the text and slash this price, maybe. And there's one final thing we could do to the design. It's an optional extra, and that's to select this lower half here, come to Filters, Stylize, Fill. Just going to select our dark color here and then make it quite a bit darker, like something like that. And then we can just animate this again along with everything else. So come to one second. Let's set a keyframe for the mix value, set it to zero, step forward six frames and set the mix value to 100. And although that's not sort of photorealistic as a graphical idea. It's kind of a lot more interesting, I think. So there you go. I hope that's been interesting and thanks very much indeed for watching.